Um, so tonight we welcome Christine Skinner, who will be looking at the financial universe from the astrological perspective for the rest of the decade. Christine's been looking at planetary pictures since she was nine years old, over a 30 year plus career specialized in measuring the links between the astrology and financial markets. And some of you will have seen Christine at our talks here in Aquarius 7. And in fact, we also did a very um, early online session with Christine, um, which I think was about 2012. So Christine's um, very well known on the astrology speaking circuit and has published now four books on finances and astrology. So welcome back to Aquarius 7, Christine, and I'll hand over to you. So tonight, the, the aim, of course, is to discuss the financial universe for the next few years. And what it seems to me is that over these next 10 years, we're going to have to negotiate some really quite complicated waves. Uh, in brief, we know history shows that every time one of the slower moving planets, especially, goes from one sign into another, there's a turbulence on the financial markets. And that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes that's a good thing. But uh, obviously, if you know it's coming, right, you can be pre better prepared. Now, the problem with all of this is that the universe is so complicated. And, and I'm embarrassed in one sense that I'm actually not showing you more tonight than I am, but we've only got an hour, right? And the, the first thing to say is that I'm not covering at all any of the fixed stars. That's not because I'm not using them, but because I've actually I've had to slim down what I was doing. But I want you to be aware that I'm sure that there is a much, much bigger story at play, not just with the fixed stars, but also with the planets as we see them from Earth. You know, for example, whether or not Venus is, uh, is a morning or an evening star. I think all of these things have a, a, well, they, they should all of them be taken into account, but I can't do that tonight. I wanted to very sh quickly show you my own chart just to, so that you understand where I'm coming from. I have a, a, a moon at 12 degrees of Sagittarius in the eighth, whatever system you're going to use. Right? And I do think that this whole thing about your financial welfare is as important as anything else. And as we all know, if people are diseased, very often they're diseased in many different ways, including that sense of lack and um, financial well-being. And the reason I do all this research, of course, all that, you know, handful of stuff in the sixth house. So you understand where I'm coming from there. This, though, is um, the, our event tonight. And I want to start with this because today is very special. And I understand that, you know, <laughs> there have been some dramas on the markets today. But I and and also in the political sphere, as you um, I hope somebody is timing some of these resignations here tonight. But what I wanted to point out to you was that uh, this very interesting thing that tonight Mercury is stationed at 24 degrees of Capricorn. Now, whether or not that picks up anything in your own chart, it certainly picks up on one of the major um, chart or chart notes or echo sounds for Europe. If we go back to um, the opening of the, the, the Second World War, the 1st of September 1939, you'll find Mars at 24 degrees of Capricorn. And I find it very interesting that Mercury is stationed on this very precise degree again now. And there is the talk of war in Europe. I'm going to be talking about this more in a, a lecture about Europe in about a week's time. But I think it's a kind of interesting thing that we need to learn more about specific degrees. I don't think we've ever done enough work on this, and I'm sure you're all fascinated by it too. Um, but of course, the most important thing in, in talking about anything tonight is to talk about you. And I wanted to find a slide that, you know, would represent each one of us. And I decided that this sunflower thing was about the best image. And I really wanted to talk about the health, first of all, of each of us. And clearly, you know, we've had a lot of pressures in recent times. And one of the big pressures uh, uh, comes from financial pressure through interest rate rises. So I've studied this over the years, and I find that there are some very interesting themes that we can pick up. If we look at, I, I'm, obviously I've focused this on the United Kingdom, but it's not so dissimilar when you look at other Western countries. 
Taking this back to 1847, you find then that there, there was a, a right, you see the, the panic in this graph here, the panic of 1847, which where interest rates rose very sharply. Uranus was conjunct the south node in Aries. Not that many years later, Saturn in Cancer was square the nodes. Again, not too many years later, we've got Uranus in Cancer squaring the nodes. And then by 1914, when we've got the outbreak of the, the First World War, you have Saturn in Gemini square the nodes and Saturn and Pluto in Cancer. And Cancer is clearly one of the most important signs when we're looking at any kind of financial activity. Surprise, surprise, then we come all the way through. You, I didn't pick up every single um, rate rise in this, but I picked up the key ones for you. In 1973, we have Saturn in Cancer, conjunct the South Node, and Saturn square Pluto. Now, we can use this information then to plan ahead. Because there's this 1973 one again. 1980, right, some of you will remember um, rates went stupidly high, 17%. Neptune at that time was in Sagittarius and it was trying the nodes. In 1989, Jupiter in Cancer, Pluto was square the nodes. And in 2008, Neptune conjunct the node, Pluto in Capricorn, another of the cardinal signs. And then more recently, 2017, it was only, you know, it was a very small rise in 2017, but still significant. Pluto was sesquiquadrate, the nodes. Now, if we then take from that and say, well, look, the nodes are, are important, and clearly they are here, and take the position of the outer planets with them, then we should be able to look ahead over this next decade and see where the rates are likely to rise. Now, some of you will have, have heard the news today that there's already been a rise. Now, I did this first slide, which was prepared actually for the AA conference a few months ago. So um, we were expecting with Pluto trining the, the node this February that there would be a rise. I suspect that there will be another one in April when Saturn squares the nodes. Sorry, this is not intended to be a doom mongering talk. It really isn't. I want to be constructive, but I'm just trying also to be very honest about what I think is coming up. I think there will be increased rates again in, when Pluto squares the nodes in 2023, and then a further one, which won't work for all sorts of reasons, in 2025 when Jupiter and Cancer trines the nodes, and that's followed by Saturn conjuncting them. I think that's going to be a messy year, which you'll see for other reasons in a moment. So 2025, I think, is a, a crucial year. Then I've given you the list of the ones here. Jupiter conjunct the south node 2026 into 2027, when Uranus also squares the node. In 2028, we've got Jupiter squaring it. Then 29, Neptune squaring them. Saturn's conjunct the south node in 2030. And then we've got these other ones coming all the way through to 2032. So the first thing to learn about this is that if you are, you know, if anybody is borrowing money right, and planning, right, they need to know, we'd, I don't think we're going to have a repeat of what we had, you, you know, half a century ago, which it will be by then. But we definitely need to be prepared to have to spend up more in, uh, because I think the banking system, we're actually watching the breakdown of it. So these next few years, these are critical. Now, the other thing I thought that you would want to know something about were my thoughts about property prices. And there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that there's an 18.6 year, the nodal cycle has influence over property prices. The expert on this is a guy called Phil Anderson. And if you haven't heard of him before, he's not an astrologer. That's not, not his thing. He's fascinated by it. He has handfuls of planets in Sagittarius. And if you get his book, which is um, The Property Clock, it's a bit, you know, it's a doorstep. It's an encyclopedic um, analysis of property prices going back over the last couple of hundred years. It's a fascinating read. But you can use this 18.6 year cycle to get some measure of how prices are likely to go. Now, I want to be specific about this and focus on you because. As you and I know, um, it, it's always possible to, to find a bargain somewhere, something that is out of step with the norm. And 
and I think it's equally possible that you can you can work a charm on something and make you, you can have an effect on this. So this is a, a massive generalization. But on the basis of that generalization, we can make some reasonable forecasts of what's likely to happen over this next decade. Now, this is all linked to recessions. And there's very definitely a, a pattern that emerges here. So you've got two columns here. And on the left hand side, uh, this is the position of the no lunar node, the lunar north node in those years. Ignore the right hand Jupiter column for a moment and just look at the pattern. The recessions are separated by the 18.6 years. Right? So you have the you get two of them, which will be in Leo, right? Then the next couple, Virgo, and then it moves on into Libra. You can actually see the sequence. It's very definite. The sequence is equally definite on the other side. So you need to have, in, in this instance, for 1776, you needed the North Node in Leo and Jupiter in Cancer. And then the next one would continue with the North Node in Leo, but now Jupiter's moved by 180 degrees. So you can see the pattern, you can see how they actually slip. And the pattern continued through the 20th century. And if we follow that pattern, then it's, it, it, it's possible then to look to see, well, okay, the next one's gonna come up. Where is, it, where is it going to be? Where is the node going to be? Well, the node clearly has got to go into Aquarius, right? And over on the other side here, what are we looking for? We've got a, another pattern going on here. So we can, we can actually see what is likely to happen. This is going to be a Virgo effect here. So if you say, well, look, there's going to be a recession, most likely 27, 28. And you've already said, Christine, that it's possible that rates might rise as well. You know where the tough years are going to be. If you also happen to have looked at your own chart and thought, well, gosh, you know, I've got some heavy duty stuff coming up through those years maybe there's time between now and then to build up a reserve or to put your safety net into place so again we come back to you and the, the you is to keep you as healthy as possible not just in the financial sense but in any sense and so we have to talk about the pandemic and what might be around the corner now, I know there are umpteen reasons, astrological reasons that you could come up and say, well, this, you know, was going to be a pandemic. When I was doing the navigating book, I chose to go for a Pluto Chiron indicator of a pandemic. And that book came, was, it was actually, it was written through 2018, published 2019. And I said, I thought we might have a pandemic in 2020. Not for a minute did I, re did I really think this through and how awful this period was going to be for us all. Looking at it, I had, uh, and looking further, these were the dates which I thought would be indicative of mutations that were linked to that. So I thought February 2021 would be difficult, which indeed it was, the February and March of last year, if you remember. Then we had the Omicron uh, uh, variant that was uh, towards October. Right? It is possible, and it depends, of course, if you're into looking at trans-Neptunians as well, it's possible that we've got an echo of something going on at the very end of this year. Sadly, the aspect is exact on Christmas Day. I hope not. But actually, this is not really what I'm worried about. Health-wise, this is not the one that I'm worried about, because in a sense, it's possible that this was an overture to something else. And the something else, I think, is linked to February the 20th, 2026, when Saturn and Neptune will conjoin on the world axis at zero degrees of Aries. Now, you know the pattern to these Saturn-Neptune conjunctions, right? Very often, there's, it, you could do a, a disease study with this, and you can see some patterns unfolding, usually with outbreaks of flu right, with Saturn, Neptune, which is, you know, one can understand very simply. If we go back in time, though, and look to see when was the last time that Saturn and Neptune had a conjunction on the world axis, right? And that, by the way, is the Mandela for Saturn, Neptune over uh, several centuries, which I think almost looks as though it's a viral thing. It looks as though it's a disturbance to a cell. But if we look back, 
the last time the two of them made a conjunction on the world axis was at zero degrees of cancer and this was in 1738 and significantly i think in 1738 there was a great plague that actually was um, across the the habsburg empire as it was at, at the time so really the lower part of, of um, europe so you've got it uh, running across austria and and the countries along that la latitude um the epidemic is likely to have killed about 50,000 people then which remember the populations were not as big as they are now it wasn't the same um, virus, obviously, as we're dealing with now. But I think the fact that there is a resonance there, I think we do have to be prepared for the potential for a, a nasty flu type virus coming up in 25, 2026, which suggests to me that really between now and then, we each and all of us have to do whatever we can to boost our immune systems. The good news is, and I think this is good news, is that we, um, we've just come out from solar minimum. We're building up now towards solar maximum, which will come about 2025. So we should actually have the benefit of some solar activity, which ought to boost our immune systems. But even that said, I, I will definitely be doing what I can between now and then to keep my immune system in good nick. So before we can move on, we need to know where we're coming from. And we're coming from 2020, which you remember was the year of the Capricorn stellium and what is now being known as the Great Financial Reset. That occurred at the same time as we had a solar minimum. Now, what solar minimum, all that means is that the sun didn't appear, appear to be giving out the same kind of energy sources as it does when it's at maximum. And there's a rhythm to all of this. You'll have read elsewhere that there's, it's just 11.2 years, the, the, the solar cycle. In fact, that's an average. So it can be anything between nine and about 13 and a half. And it's very difficult for the solar scientists to predict exactly when minimum or maximum is going to occur. But it does seem to be the case that when uh, we've got a minimum, then people's health suffers a bit, we, we, uh, generally speaking, across the, the, the planet. 2020 was also the year of a lunar perigee. I mean, there's a perigee every month, but this was a, you know, a major perigee, and that disturbs weather patterns. We had that solar eclipse on the world axis, and then at the end of that year, we had the grand mutation, the, the Aquarian, uh, Jupiter and Saturn meeting in Aquarius for the first time in a long time. And that, as we know, is the beginning of a new business cycle. Whenever that pair get together, we're starting off a new 20 year cycle. But this one is more major because actually this one's going to last for a couple of centuries. And it's an air cycle. So whereas, uh, up until now, it's been about almost like raping the earth and taking as much as we can from it. This is, we're now moving our focus now. We've got to think different, sorry, no pun intended there, but we absolutely have to think differently. We've got to be at the forefront. We've got to learn how to use technology in a good way. Um, and obviously there's the potential for it to be used in an evil way too. So going back to that chart, that December the 21st, 2020, just note, will you, that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction at zero of Aquarius, because it's special. Because in a few weeks' time, on March the 6th, Venus is going to, um, Venus and Mars are going to conjoin on exactly that degree. Now, they've got a very, very interesting pattern going on, because they're going to conjoin, first of all, on February the 16th, at about 16 degrees of Capricorn. And then just a few weeks later, it's very unusual for them to do this double conjunction. And where we know that the Jupiter-Saturn thing is about putting down a building block, right? when Venus and Mars come along and put down their union there as well, I think if you picked up even any of today's papers, you'll see that the number of mergers and acquisitions, they're already increasing. I think there are going to be some major ones um, a, a, in the early part of March. And it might, if you've already got shares in anything, then just have a look to see who, who, might the, who might those businesses be taken over by or who that might they be conjoined with. Because although I think we may have a little bit of a dip in the, in, in the coming days and, and weeks, that's a platform then for growth later. 
So the big waves that are coming are, are really huge. I mean, obviously Saturn's changing signs every couple of years, but it's the fact that Saturn is going to change signs going from Aquarius into Pisces. Just as Sedna moves from Taurus, where it's been since the 60s, and moves into Gemini. Right? Pluto, at the same time, is going from Capricorn into Aquarius. So that's three major things. Now, it, it, imagine this is like uh, uh, the, the, the English Channel for a minute. You could, would have three different tides colliding. This is going to be a time when anybody is going to have to have their um, safety nets well in place. And it's really been, it's good, it, it's been very helpful for me anyway, in preparing up this talk is to realize just how much I need to get in shape for 2023. There's a very, very small gap between 2024, sorry, I'll go and check that in a minute, um, between 2024 and then Neptune going from Pisces to Aries, 25, 26. Simultaneously, Uranus is going to go from Taurus to Gemini and Saturn will move from Pisces to Aries. So we can see that in just a very short space of time, right, we've got some very, very big waves potentially with the turbulence to chuck all of us out. We know already, if, and I'm going to look at this in a minute, some of the blockchain and the cryptocurrencies that are coming up, we know we're going to have to think differently. And if as yet you haven't even thought about having a crypto wallet, you need to start thinking about that now, because the way in which we've approached money by the time we get to 2032 is going to be completely different. And um, we will have to be far more au fait with, with the systems that have been developing really since the Saturn-Uranus conjunction at the end of the 1980s. Now, um, if you haven't seen this before, you might enjoy this. This is what is known as the McQuarto business cycle. And this is, again, this is following the lunar node. Uh, this is a cycle that was first discovered, I think, in the middle 1940s. I may have got that wrong. But anyway, this was a study taken at the time of American stock prices. And it's a very interesting cycle, this one, because it seems to work definitely over there. Our own in the UK has got a slightly different twist on this. And I think different countries maybe just have their need to be, there's some fine tuning needed. But you use this to say, where, where's the, the lunar node now? Well, the lunar node just gone into Taurus, right? So this is, we're in a normal business trend here. It's suggesting that the downtime prices are firmly down when uh, the lunar node is in Aquarius and we're not quite there yet. So uh, at the moment, there's still this kind of optimism and certainly in the States, that has been the case. But I am looking for that downturn. And if you remember, we were looking at it before and seeing that that was likely to be a recession time. 2027-ish. But let's just focus on where we are. Oh, oh sorry. And the that study that I showed you, the chart that I showed you, as I said, was done, it was certainly done pre-1950. We've now got the advantage in that we can use the computer programs now. We can take all the data. And this is data of, from the Dow Jones from 1900 through to 2019. So it's a, a much larger period. And this shows very clearly that the, the lowest point for the Dow anyway is when the lunar node is going through Aries. It's, not, it's actually not quite so bad, apparently, at Aquarius. So if you were following this, we would think, hmm, well, maybe uh, the, uh, the real difficult time is perhaps going to be 2030-ish. The jury is out on this, but it's an interesting thing to note. What we can do is to see what gains we can make now. And this is fascinating because this is the Dow, again, over a 120 years period. And it's showing that uh, one of the outstanding winners really is when Jupiter is going through Pisces. So give or take the fact that we've got some stresses going on in the markets now, it's reasonable to expect that as Ju you know, once we've got past the March the 6th thing, that the uh, markets will start to rise again. And whilst Jupiter's going through Pisces, there ought to be some gains made. 
we best have a look to see what happens when Saturn goes through Pisces and where Saturn is at the moment in Aquarius. And so remember the sample size, of course, is much, much uh, smaller because Saturn takes so long to go through a sign. Even so, there's some sort of interesting things to learn here. For example, you know, uh, the Tao particularly doesn't do well when Saturn goes through Taurus and yet it loves Scorpio, right? So that's an interesting picture. But we need to know more about the Saturn Uranus cycle, because if you're going to na navigate these next few years, this is the one you want to be focused on. It too, over the course of seven orbits, makes these beautiful, beautiful patterns. And if, can you imagine that how strong that must be? Imagine that with, you know, it, I don't know if any of you are into crochet or knitting or whatever, but if, if you made something that was like that, it would actually be quite sturdy, right? It, it would it would hold something. And Saturn Uranus, I think, is, is a great building block. But this particular Saturn Uranus cycle, I think, is a fantastically um, important one. For me, it is all about blockchain, not exclusively, but I think, you know, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Saturn is the block and Uranus is the chain. Right? And we need to go back then to 1988. If you were to study, you know, where the cryptos and all of that stuff was, have come from, you would, you would certainly, you would go back probably to the early 70s or even, you know, the middle 1960s. But 1988 and that time, that was when things really began to take off. The developments through 1988 to the 1990 were really most considerable. Saturn and Uranus uh, had their conjunction, the beginning of this present cycle, at 29 degrees and 55 minutes of Sagittarius. So within five minutes of arc of the world axis. I'd like to know more about, you know, why is it, was it at 29? Wasn't, why wasn't it actually at, at zero? It's, it's kind of quite fascinating that. But it does suggest sort of global um, enterprises. I'd like you also with this chart to note that 19, the Mercury was at, uh, retrograde at 19 degrees of Aquarius. Saturn is going to station there, uh, well, it stations actually about 18 at the end of this year, and that may be a down moment for the, the cryptos, a temporary one. But this chart, I think, still has a lot of mileage. There's a lot we can learn from it. The first square of the cycle was in 1999. And the square happened at 15 degrees of Aquarius and Taurus. Now we know that Saturn, of course, is going through Aquarius now and Uranus is in Taurus. So there are still echoes playing out with this. The cycle itself, that was the first square. The opposition happened in 2009. Again, 29 degrees of Virgo, um, 55 minutes, almost again on the world axis again. And then we have, we're going to come up to the conjunction, which will happen at 29 of Gemini 55, which is in 2032. And these dates, these cornerstones of this cycle, this is where you can track what's been happening with the cryptos through this. If we go back to 1999, this is a chart, this is a, a financial chart. Um, and all you need to do in this instance, it's the, uh, the S&P index. And all I want you to see here is just the fact that, you know, the lines go up and go down. But the, the key thing is that they go up towards the Saturn Uranus square and then they fell down. Right. Even up to the middle one, which was, um, you know, allowing for retrogrades, you've still got a down thereafter right? and you had a down following the last one. There seems to be something about uh, the particularly at the, at the first, you have this big climb up into the aspect and then things fall over. We're right now, this is what's been, been happening. We've had a Saturn Uranus square all the way through um, 2021, as you know. We've been expecting, I have been expecting there to be a major drop at some point. I thought that this, you know, when we had the drop last year, 2021, I thought that was going to be it, but it didn't look big enough really for what it ought to be. Uh, the second one again was in a sense a little bit disappointing, but now this is where we are now. This is actually not up to date, but we are coming into a contra parallel, which is March the 25th. 
and until that's over, I'm not sure that these markets really can uh, continue on their upward climb. But certainly, I'm, I'm confident that there is going to be an upward climb. Grace Morris, who is a fabulous uh, business astrologer in the States, absolutely tremendous, and done a huge amount of work on this, she is confident that the uh, certainly old industries are gone, they're finishing off, but the new ones are going to take over and they're going to fly very high. This is, um, again, this is a close-up thing of last year, but this time the, the graph is of the uh, of Bitcoin with the US dollar. And uh, again, though it too seemed to almost, you know, it responded to the Saturn Uranus and this is where it is now. So I don't want to focus entirely on, on, on money matters, but, you know, it is money that makes the world go round. It is a lunar thing, really, you know, well-being, asset management, your home, uh, how you feed yourself, you know, all the, the concerns today about whether or not people can pay their energy bills. Money, when I look at these pictures, really, I'm, the, the graphs, whatever, there's people behind it all, right? And trying to understand the markets actually is a means of, of trying to maintain better well-being. I want to go back now to 2018. And, and the reason for this is that I'm noticing that 11 degrees of the fixed, and obviously I'd pick that up, wouldn't I? Because my ascendant is 11 of the, of the fixed. Um, but hopefully I would have done this anyway. Um, since it, we've had all sorts of activity happening at about 11 of the fixed or 9, 10 of the fixed in the last few years. And each time there's been a major event on this, there has also been a significant financial move. So what happened this one, right? Because uh, the reason for bringing this up is that, of course, Saturn is presently um, around about 11 degrees of, of Aquarius opposing this. That day was the scariest day on Wall Street in years and stocks went into free fall. I don't need to read you all of this, but it was a, a you know, it was a nightmare day, an absolute nightmare day. Later that year, on August the 19th, stationed direct at 11 Leo. And once again, although you don't need to see the graph tonight, once again, there was movement on the markets that was to the negative side. So 11 degrees seems to be a tipping point moment. It certainly seems to be 11 degrees of the fix seem to have some resonance with Bitcoin especially. And this isn't, you know, it, as an astrologer, it's very tempting to always look back at uh, the, you know, the birth chart for something. But the thing about looking at the financial markets is that you actually have to almost ignore what you think is the birth chart. And, and assess what does it react to you can find the explanation about why it's reacting to a particular degree later and discover it was some fixed star or some harmonic or something but learning what the reactive points are that's the crucial thing so in 2022 where we are now we've really got to be thinking about 10 11 degrees of the fixed signs because that's obviously a sensitive area we're going to have an eclipse a solar eclipse on the 30th of April, and that's at 10 degrees, um, almost 11. And I think that's going to be a significant moment for, for the cryptos. The Saturn square Uranus is echoing all year. And I think anytime anything goes past 11 degrees of the fixed, we will hear that again. Pluto's been square Eris now for, for some time. And again, I think there'll be echoes of that. I think it's probably a bit too late to invest in any of the Jupiter and Pisces companies, um, but we'll look at those very briefly. Um, this is the, the chart for the, the solar eclipse that's coming. And as you see, the sun and moon both at 10, they're with Uranus at 14, and significantly Mars is at 11 degrees of Pisces. So the eclipse is sextile the Mars. That to me gives the, the Pisces bit a little bit of em extra emphasis. So you know, maybe, maybe the um, there will be a, a hanger, what do you call it? It's like a hangover if, effect, because although Jupiter by that time is almost on its way into Aries, 
it could be that if you chose to buy shares now in, in things that are very Pisces related, and of course, obviously you've got to do your homework on all of this, it might still be possible to make quite, quite a bit of gain between now even a, and the end of April or mid-May. I picked up a couple of key dates for this year, um, the major one being the 28th of July, which is a Thursday. Always with the looking at any of the financial stuff is to think how logical is it, right? Because whatever you think something's going to happen, you actually, is it between a Monday to Friday, although we have global markets, the, the chances are if there's going to be a big event, it will happen between a Monday and a Friday. So the fact that this is Thursday, I know it's late in the day, this one, 2100 hours, uh, our time, but it could have a knock-on effect into the, the, the Friday, the 29th. So I would mark that this one in your diary because... Jupiter is stationing that day and it's stationing at eight degrees of Aries and that's another one of the degrees that we now know to be super sensitive market wise. Let me take you back and to 1929 and when um, Uranus was at eight degrees of Aries just as everything was falling over I mean as you probably know 1929 it, the, the crash happened over a period of days but Mercury was opposing Uranus at eight degrees of the Cardinals then. So I'm suspicious about that uh, date at the end of July. Very, very interesting. Um, Mars in this chart here uh, was at eight degrees of, of Scorpio, and that's picking up again. The, the Saturn Uranus is still echoing with that. So if we have a down day this year, could be at the end of July. For the Jupiter in Pisces, these are the, the stocks and types of stocks I would be looking at. Um, the oceanics, media, the pharmaceuticals, water purification, absolutely. And that's a big theme at the end of the year. And anything to do with uh, health, obviously, they, again, that takes us back to the pharmaceuticals. I'm not going to talk about this chart other than to put it in here because the world and his wife are going to be doing talks on Jupiter conjunct Neptune uh, that's coming up. It's quite an interesting game to play, you know, um, what do we think it's going to be? I'm going to, you know, my eye is thinking about ocean cleanups because I want to think on the, the positive with this. Um, and I, I'm certainly expecting some breakthrough news then and perhaps the discovery of, of health related um, products coming from the sea. It's very interesting, isn't it, this year that we spend so much of the month, um, the planets are in a bowl shape, and then the moon comes out and creates the, the handle to the bucket for the other half of the month. It's, I think, quite interesting, this chart here with the moon in, in Virgo, there, that's really drawing my attention to health products. And I will be looking and, and reading the papers to see what discoveries, what breakthroughs there might be then. The lunar eclipse, which follows on May the 16th, is also an interesting one. This one, um, Saturn is exactly right angle to both the sun and moon. May the 17th is the birth date of the New York Stock Exchange. So really in its Saturn return, uh, in, in its um, solar return rather, Saturn is, is, you know, is at this special place. And that rather suggests that maybe that might be a tentative, there might be a slippy day on, on the markets might be, get a bit of a down there, particularly with Mars conjunct Neptune. It could be that there's some fraud exposure. That's a possibility. This is one of the key days of the year. Um, the other one to keep your eye out uh, for is um, August the 12th. Um, an, an interesting chart, this one. Uranus is still very close to the node. Uh, it, and, and Jupiter, again, is, that, is still at that eight degrees of, um, of Aries. The, the Uranus node thing is very, very interesting because the last time that that pair met up in Taurus was uh, the Crimean War. Right? And, and of course, we're talking about the possibility of war in Europe again then, even if it's staved off now, which is likely, right? Um, I don't think we can all of us breathe a sigh of relief until we get the, those two are separated. This is the chart, this is a, a means by which I do sort of my health check for the year. This is a graphic ephemeris that has the 0 to 360 down the side, the months of the year then. And this is just traces each one of the outer planets. Then I put the, the lunations on and look to see if there's anything exactly lining up. And that's just what we were seeing before. Saturn is with the full moon 
um, in, in August. So that, that's how I check out the state of, of each year. We've got a partial solar eclipse coming on October the 25th. And, but this one, I think, could be a really positive one. And I would urge you to have a look. It's a Tuesday. Please have a look at this one because it's the Sun conjunct Venus. And companies that are born with Sun conjunct Venus tend to do extremely well, right? Maybe it's because they're in love with themselves. But this one, you know, this is a mining one. If there's any crypto that's declared that day, I, I think it'll be one to watch. So look to, you know, there are cryptos coming on the market every day, you know, hundreds of them. So but mark that one out because October the 25th could be a special one. And if you've got planets at two degrees of Scorpio, maybe it will be made to measure. 2023, this is where we start to hit some of the difficult times when I, I'm saying, you know, the waves are going to get a bit uh, choppy. Right? Again, I'm just picking up some of the, the key ones here. This, um, this is the date for, this is March the 7th, which can I tell you, uh, with the markets generally, they, they seem to be anniversary dates. And the first week of March is very commonly a low time. So the, the fact that this is a Tuesday, March the 7th, and Saturn just goes into Pisces suggests this could be a choppy water day. 2023, look, I, when I showed you the one for 2022, I was only picking up one major event. 2023, I'm picking up one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the slow moving planets changing signs and the nations on top. So for 2023, it really, we're in for a bumpy ride. So I would say, because I've got to look for a constructive comment for you, is spread the risk. I would say that I've got a moon in, in Sagittarius. That's my mutable way of do, doing things. But spread risk, because I think that's the safest way to deal with this, which means having some cash, some cryptos, whatever you do with property, a bit of equity, and a bit of stuff that is definitely a tangible trade tangibly trading not necessarily gold or silver because i think those days are, are almost done now um, we, we need to look for something else jupiter in taurus you could think now you know as a group if ever you're short of a speaker right you can play this game what would jupiter in taurus what would you invest in right um, it's not actually sugar. Sugar doesn't do very well with Jupiter in Taurus as it happens, right? But you could think of other things that Jupiter in Taurus might be good at. It's a building sign. So perhaps building, um, uh, it, uh, you know, woods and uh, what do you call it? Building material actually might be something that you could consider. I wanted very quickly to say about the Mars Uranus crash cycle, which is the one where it tends to be Arch Crawford worked this one out that the Mars Uranus, as they move up into their opposition, that markets tend to go up and fall over immediately after the opposition. If that's the case, right, and this is a very good example of it, this is where we had Mars in Taurus and Uranus in Scorpio. Of course, recently they've been the other way around, and this was the Dow Jones index in 1981. And Absolutely, after they'd had their top there, the market fell a long way. They're not going to be doing that top again until the 11th of November 2023, but that one's worth marking in your diary as well. There's a Sun conjunct Mars that day, uh, which uh, you know would, would add emphasis to the possibility of the market moving up into it, but then losing momentum afterwards. In 2024, we have Jupiter in Gemini, square Saturn in Pisces. Uh, this graph here is done um, overlaying 90 degrees at a time. And there's your crossing there. Now, what we do know is that the Jupiter Saturn cycle follows some of banking stocks and banks tend to not like the hard aspects between those two. Uh, the hard aspects, of course, you can come down to the um, semi squares and, and even below that to the 22 and a half between the two planets. But certainly I would be think I would be concerned about August of 2024 and hoping that bankers aren't really necessarily on holiday then because there's likely to be a crisis then. This is the 19th of August of that year and this is where I think the crisis may come. It's a crypto crisis. Uh, we have the sun will be conjunct Vesta, right? Vesta being the trader's asteroid 
And incidentally, uh, um, this is a uh, 27 degrees of Leo is thought of as being the astrologer's degree. Uh, maybe we should be having a big conference then. Who knows? Um, Uranus is square. That is, it's the, the full moon of, of that um, chart with Uranus square to it. Who knows? I, I just think that with um, Jupiter at the same time will be square the Mars position in the New York Stock Exchange chart. So that suggests to me that, you know, that that could be a very slippy day for them as well. Incidentally, 17, 18 degrees of the of um, the mutables uh, picks up the Mars from the New York Stock Exchange chart. And that so if you've got Saturn opposing Venus there, that could be a slamming on of the brakes, some shock system there, which I think will come from uh, the cryptos. In terms of investment, you know that Pluto is going to go into Aquarius. It is not going to miss a sign. Right? So you could start to invest in things that uh, improve on air pollution. We would absolutely need to do something about that. Pluto in Aquarius is also like to, likely to bring up things like uh, genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, heavy water, a bit data mining, space exploration, and anything to do with digital death management, which sounds bizarre, but you know, there will be, I'm sure companies offer to wipe out your Facebook account for you or um, Instagram or, or whatever. These are areas that are likely to grow. And, and if you were looking now, you might be able to, to catch in on, on the wave and, and buy cheaply now. I like the idea of investing with Pluto. Right? Um, so what would you invest in? Well, clean air and how best to clean air and how best to be more efficient with our air. Wind farming will be just one of the things. 2025, again, I'm using just that same system again, right? I'm looking to see, it looks as though it's quite clear, right? but actually it's not because this is Neptune's journey. This is Neptune creeping into Aries up here. Um, Grace, Grace's work showed that, um, this is Grace Morris's work showed that when Neptune goes through one of the fire signs, interest rates tend to rise very quickly. So I, I think we've got to be prepared for 2025 being difficult and possibly we've got a pandemic then. That could be a really, really awkward time. Absolutely, you'd want to have your safety net in place before then. Um, I'm not sure why that says 2026 when it's the eclipse of 2025. Sorry about that, that's in the wrong place. I'll have to miss that because I can't remember that one. But 2025, despite all the difficulties of it, Jupiter is going into Cancer. So I suspect that people won't be able to afford to move home, right? And, and because of that, they'll be trying to make their homes more energy efficient right? um, and, and trying to make home a safer place, safe in every possible sense. So again, you would think in 2023, investing in companies that offer that kind of service for 2025. Great. So this is the chart that I showed you earlier. This is that February the 20th, 2026. I think it might be worth a while, all of us meditating on this one, because this is that Saturn-Neptune conjunction. I rather think that we perhaps all of us need to have a, a small conference just discussing this. Um, it's just in, you know, everything is in that bowl shape. You've got stelliums in Aries and stelliums in Pisces. And, um, I think we need to decipher this a little bit better. What would we advise? What would we say to leaders? Uh, how would they negotiate this? Particularly if the Saturn-Neptune thing is a complete, and, and probably will be, a complete change in, in a political um, direction. Saturn and Neptune tends to be more of a, the, the socialist um, end of things. But we also need, I'm sure, we're going to need to be infinitely more compassionate than the, we, we have been just across the world. It's, this isn't about just being UK or just being English or something. This is something much, much bigger. And I think the fact that uh, Sedna will have moved into Gemini by then, this says something about the way in which we communicate generally. Oh. So looking for some good news, and I think there is. The good news is that Uranus 
um, and Pluto are going to move are moving towards a trine arrangement, which they reach in 2026 and don't really separate until 2029. You see, they the trine happens in the third quarter of 2026 and the fourth quarter, and then into 27, 28, 28, and then they begin to separate there. So we have to think about that. Is that a good combination? How are they going to work well together? They're both of them going to be in air signs. So this says something about most likely this is going to be robotics and artificial um, intelligence and great leaps forward with that. I'd also like to think that it's going to bring breakthroughs um, in the way in which we communicate possibly even beyond our, our beyond the earth. Right? Um, I'm not actually a, a Star Wars or, or a spacey person really, but I do think that we're going to be able to decode some of the radio waves that are, come, are clearly coming from their pulse systems that you know, we haven't been able to understand, but perhaps we are going to gain some understanding. Perhaps, perhaps, I don't know. I thought this was an interesting thing to show you about 2027 as well. Neptune will arrive at zero degrees of declination. Uh, that's not something that happens very often, right? Um, and Neptune, of course, like everything else, goes from south to north declination and back again. You might be interested to know that the last time that Neptune was in this situation was 1862, um, which was the American Civil War but also when there was a bit of a fracas between France and Mexico, amongst other things. So it does seem that when Neptune is crossing over the zero declination line, right, as with any of the planets, actually, there is a, a, a ripple effect. There's a, an alteration in allegiance, which inevitably or seems to inevitably lead to war and, and an altered world view. So I'm absolutely of the opinion that 2027, I mean, I'm, I, you know, going back to the first Financial Universe book that I did, which was 2004, um, I was saying in that that I, I didn't think that the United States would stick to in its present form in our lifetime. I, I, I thought that, you know, by the end, the second half of this decade, it would be coming apart at the seams. And I think the signs are already there. The big question is, how is it going to dissolve? How is it going to remake itself? The same is also going to be true of Europe, of course. Boundaries are all altering. That's just to show, this chart here is just showing you in the 1860s, Neptune slowly moving over the zero degree, degree line, which is in the middle of the page there. In uh, 2027, uh, this was another interesting picture, this one. Uranus shows up at eight degrees of Gemini. Now, eight Gemini has a, is important both in, in the chart for the United, well, one of the charts for the United States. It's also a chart going back to the chart from med medieval Europe. Um, eight degrees of Gemini shows up very strongly there as well. So that sort of rather suggests that there will be political upheaval, at least in those regions in the world, if not elsewhere. Right? But then at the same time, the node is back at 11 degrees of the fixed. So I'm wondering about this one and looking at it and thinking, gosh, it's interesting, the date that I've looked at here, the moon and Saturn are conjunct. Well, that's not, you know, generally speaking, that's not a pretty picture either. So I, I'm, you know, <laughs> if we can do forecasting markets that far ahead, you can actually say, well, that's going to be a down day on the markets. The political news isn't going to be very good. So it um, be interesting to see if that happens. Um, in 2028, right, this, these are declination pictures. In 2028, we've got Venus coming out of bounds. There she is. Oh, I've lost my mouse. There she is, out of bounds here. And Mars almost out of bounds a little bit later. Um, generally speaking, that, that would, that would centre here. When Venus is coming to this kind of extremity, you look for markets coming up suddenly. So there may be something to, to celebrate. There's a, that coincides almost neatly with Mars and Saturn coming into a parallel ar arrangement. So I wonder whether or not there will be some concern, some blockage in about the third week of April that suddenly release that gives a, a, a push to the markets uh, about a week later. 
So now we're back into where might we all be headed? Really, this is the decade of the brain and having to think differently. We're going to have to extend our astrological knowledge. If you, if you haven't seen it or looked at it, one of the, the mind-blowing books for me has been uh, Sue Keats's book on um, more Plutos and the work that Alison Lambert has done in the same area. This is take, looking at the dwarf planets. I think we are going to have to extend our um, vocabulary as well. So we're in a very exciting place now, because if you start to add those factors in, then I think you start to look at industries which, as yet, we barely know anything about, but which will develop very quickly um, in the next few years. I suppose the best investment is to buy something like New Scientist and try and keep on top of what's happening. The cryptos, of course, have everybody's imagination, and I've only put three of them here, but, you know, on my desk here, the, the the page to my right is a list of 86, and over here, this lot is 132. And there's no, and that's scratching the surface. Um, they're coming out all the time. It, they, these blockchain plans, and um, it isn't just about money. This is going to affect every area of our life. Right? And it, I'm not going to manage it, but I think really good astrologers are going to be looking for key dates for when these developments might happen. This is the chart for Bitcoin, a chart for Bitcoin, can I say, right? Um, this one clearly doesn't work, by the way. The angles of this are absolutely way off, right? Um, but the, there's, no, there's no argument about it being January the 3rd, 2009 at 18.15 uh, universal time. The argument is where you should um, put it for. Um, the, in the frame are Gainesville, Florida, Sydney, Australia, Washington, and London. Take your choice. Um, but what we what we do know here is that you know things like Chiron don't move that fast during the course of the day, and Saturn is going to station on its Chiron later this year. So although the price I think will go very high in the next few years for this year, um, I think it's still probably a buy. The last thing I wanted to show you before I shut up and then take the, the questions is if you haven't yet been to this, please go. Right? This is the online astrology catalogue. Um, Georgia Stathis and I drank tea one afternoon in Philadelphia and we were bemoaning or not bemoaning. We were concerned about the fact that we had friends who were leaving the planet, passing over, as they say, and that their relatives and uh, ancestors weren't interested in their books and things were ending up in what the Americans call dumpsters. And uh, yeah, anyway, being thrown out and we were concerned about trying to, to keep hold of, the, of all of this information. We tried it as a small library. It doesn't work because the costs of having the fabric of the building and where should it be? We couldn't do that. But we have done this online astrology catalog please please go and try it if you type if you go into it and then type on it, uh, where it's got search the catalog if you type in something that you're interested in uh, let's say take the fixed star canopus for a minute canopus just type that in then it will give you a list of books and even um, books where Canopus is mentioned in, as one of the chapter headings. It will give you the name of the book and where the book is. It won't actually give you the book. Eventually, we'll have ebooks in there that you can download. I think there's a few things there, but we've got 20,000 books now catalogued in there. So if you want to look up financial astrology, you'll see all the stuff that we've managed to catalog already. It's a great resource, but we'd like you to, to check and see what's wrong with it. So if you find an error, we'd like to know. Um, that's its chart, in case you're interested in that. We had a fight about that, but, um, you know, what's the perfect day for it? Learning on the way that there is no such thing as a perfect day. But we're just coming up. Um, you know, uh, we're just seven years old and coming up. We've got room for, we've certainly got room for volunteers if you're interested. But the, the first volunteering thing you could do is to go and look at the, the site. I'm going to do a thing about the future for Europe next week, which is an NCGR free event. But with that, I finished my diatribe.